I thought I would drop a little uh, professional advice on the channel today. By the way, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, click the subscription button below, um, then you'll get updated and stuff when I upload new videos, which at the minute is about once a week. Um, give or take a few, uh, and then you don't miss out. For those of you who already subscribed, thank you very much. It's very cool that you're being here. I do like it very much. Um, yes, yeah, really appreciative. So I've got um, five tips. No, I'm going to read off my laptop. Five tips that um, will that I think hold people back as photographers. Um, whether that kind of stops them getting work, or whether that kind of puts them back into the mix of everybody else and stops them standing out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm going to really, not really quickly, but I'm going to run through them um, in my normal waffly manner. Lots of hands today. Um, Number one, you use way too much shadows in your images. So when you're taking photos of stuff and the photos might look great, but then when you import them into Lightroom or Capture One or Photoshop or whatever it is, you then, in order to bring the balance back because you didn't quite get the exposure that you wanted right in camera, maybe it's a bit dark, you've ramped those shadows up and given it that HDR look, which can sometimes look a little bit sickly sweet. And Shadows work. It's great to pull shadows out sometimes when you need to just give a limit, give an image just a little bit more uh, brightness to it without like really killing it with lots and lots of exposure. Shadows are great, but when you ramp that slider right up and make it into like a really bright HDR image, you kind of look like you've just stuck an Instagram filter on it, and lots of people do that. And if you want to kind of get ahead in this game of sports photography, you need to stand out a little bit and ramped up shadows just don't really help you do that at all so be cautious i always find if i'm applying individual sliders to stuff take it further than i think it needs to go and then back it off to where i think is comfortable that's probably a better way to do it rather than just kind of like keep eking it up keep it eking it up because that way actually what you do um is by doing it that way you kind of end up pushing things a bit too far whereas if you ramp it up first and then draw it back until you feel it's a bit right you generally get a better, better, better level of it. Um, it just looks a bit of a better image, uh, really. Number two, this is something that I have had a bugbear for for an awful long time. Uh, something that anybody who knows me knows that I will preach about this. Um, but it's something as well that, in a slightly different way, I've been applying recently to a lot of my images, especially for last year. So, straight images. You're, one of the things that hold, is holding you back as a photographer is you're not straightening your images. Now, there is a moment and a point in time where funky angles and stuff work. If you look through my portfolio, you will notice there is an awful lot of funky angles at times, and that's fine. However, there's points when that doesn't work and when it just looks odd. And those points are when the background's really distinguishable along with your subject. So for example, if you have a subject in front of you, that's got, if you've got a subject on your image and it's got a very, very blown up background, you can't really tell what's there at all. An, an angle actually can work quite well sometimes and give you a little bit of something different. However, if it's a image of an athlete or someone doing some kind of sport that puts them in the background against that background and the horizons aren't straight and the buildings aren't straight and it looks like you've just taken it on an angle, then it looks a bit amateurish. Those are the ones that you need to pull back and straighten up. And there's some great tools in Photoshop that help you to do that. You can do it on the rotate tool as you want anyway, or you can click the straighten tool and just find a line and straighten it along that line. And then Photoshop does it, uh, Lightroom, sorry, does it for you. It's really clever, really helps you out. But if there's a distinguishable line, whether that's a building or a post or a horizon or whatever it might be, if it, if there is a distinguishable straight edge that really should be upright or, uh, upright or horizontal, you need to straighten that bad boy up. The other thing you can do on Photoshop uh, in Lightroom, why am I getting those models today? The other thing you can do in Lightroom, which really, really does help, especially when you've got buildings and stuff, is to use the transform tools in Lightroom. And those are just in the transform section of Lightroom on the panel on the right hand side. And what that does is it allows you, and what all I do basically is just click auto and then nine times out of 10, it pretty much figures it out. What that does is sometimes when you're working, especially on wider lenses, the angles of a building tend to fall away. So it looks like a building's kind of falling over. And actually what you want to do is you want to bring that building upright and straight. And what the transform auto stuff does in Lightroom is it just straightens up those buildings and maintains pretty much nine times out of 10, 
maintains your subject in a relatively nice way. So it, it works really, really well. But that's definitely something that a lot of photographers hold themselves back on is that they don't straighten up those images that need to be straight. Sometimes you can get away with a jointy angle, but for those times when you can't, you really need to straighten them up. It makes a huge difference. Number, number three, you're touting for work all the time okay you've got in your bio on instagram dm me for collabs or you've got on every single image you ever post direct message me for collaborations or you're always trying to sell as opposed to just putting your work out there for people to enjoy if you're constantly chasing work and you're constantly chasing money that holds you back as a photographer because it means you're chasing stuff as opposed to you just putting your work out there and be confident enough nine times out of ten if you have someone who really, really loves your stuff, nine times out of 10, they won't come to you for work. It's not really how it works. What you, what the reality is, is that you chase those opportunities. You approach those people that you wanna work with, you spend time getting to know them, building relationships, and then the work comes from there. It's very, very rare, rare in sports photography that people will come to you and say, I love what you do, can we use your stuff? Can we get a, um, can we get you to cover this event? Can we get you to cover this race, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What happens by you going, D DM me for this, you know, open and available for work, blah, 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 blah. All it does is make you seem a bit needy to the rest of the world, and that holds you back up as, as a photographer if you are trying to make it. So if you've got those kind of things in your profile, you post those kind of things every time you post off an image, be aware, be careful. It can come off as really, really needy and hold you back. Number four, you have an ugly ass watermark. It's too big, it's too prominent, it is right across the middle of your images or you've got thousands of them across your image in order to stop people stealing your work, okay? There is a time and a place for, let's break this down into two things. There is a time and a place for proofing images with a ton of watermarks all over them. It stops people stealing your images who should be viewing them to buy, okay? So if you go, for example, you go and shoot a uh, running race and you're there to capture an image of every single runner and to sell those images on, and that's part of the agreement that you have with the race, blah, blah, blah. If you put an unwatermarked image up on your site or wherever that people can view, nine times out of, nine times out of 10, they'll take it. Nine times out of 10, even if you stick a watermark, watermarks all over it, they'll take it anyway, because that's what a lot of people are like. But those are the times when you really should be making sure there's prominence in your watermarks over those images. Aside from that, people aren't gonna really steal your stuff. And if they steal your stuff, that's the world we kind of live in. Watermarking it with an ugly ass watermark that you spent no time, no attention, no care over will hold you back, makes you look a little bit amateurish, makes you look like you don't quite know what you're doing, you haven't quite got that professionalism. If you want to add a watermark, and I've had them throughout the years, I don't tend to watermark now unless I'm working for uh, brands who specifically want their images watermarked with certain stuff, which is fine. Um, if, you, if you do want a watermark, take time to put it in there, but not so that it detracts from the image. People, nine times out of 10 will not steal your images. They really, really won't, unless you're trying to charge them for that image and then they'll probably steal it. But like just posting it on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram with a massive, huge, great, big, ugly ass watermark on it, just makes you look a bit tacky as a photographer. So refine it. If you want it on there, great. Just refine it and make it look really, really cool. There's a guy, a photographer I follow, an American motorsport photographer called Jamie Price. I'll link his stuff uh, in the in the below, in the below, in the comments and stuff. His stuff is ace. He's got some beautiful, beautiful work. But his trick for watermarking is he will put very, very, very transparent uh, watermarks of his name randomly throughout the image so that you don't really notice it on the web, so it doesn't really detract. But what happens is when people then take that image and try and print it, that's when the watermark shows up because they blow that up and then the watermark becomes noticeable. So little subtle tricks like that, if you're really worried about it, go subtle and go down that route. If you're gonna have a watermark, make sure it's refined, make sure it reflects the kind of professionality, professionality, professionalism that you wanna portray and not kind of like just a bit amateurish and not really sure you know what you're doing. Number five, number five, one, two, three. five. You are not showing your work because you don't think your stuff's as good as everybody else. And this is gonna hold you back as a photographer more than any of the other things that I've talked about. If you have, if you have work put out there, 
there are going to be people better than you. There are going to be people who are worse than you. But if you want to get ahead as a photographer, if you want people to notice your work, you need to put your work out there, whether you think there are people better than you or not. Getting over that fear of sharing the work that you think is good is a really important thing. You have to do it regularly. The more you do it, the more comfortable you get with just posting it, the less you tend to compare yourself to other people, which is what holds a lot of us back. But not posting it because you you think people are better than you isn't going to get you anywhere. People need to see your work because that ha that's how you build relationships. That's how you build interest. That's how you build a following. That's how you get work ultimately as a professional photographer or as any kind of semi-pro, amateur, whatever you want to call it. You have to put your work out there. Don't worry about whether you think people are better than you. If I didn't put my, if I thought people were better than me and I worried about that stuff, I would never post any of my images ever because the likes of Darren Heath and Vladimir Reese would always be a million times better than me, right? You need to just put your stuff out there. It's not about whether you think other people are better than you. It's about people appreciating your work that you've spent time creating. So put it out there, be brave, just do it. Otherwise you're just gonna hold yourself back as a photographer. So five tips um, on why, or five things that I think people will get held back as photographers on. And it isn't just sports, it mainly is sports obviously for this channel, but it isn't just sports, it's portraiture, it's landscapes, it's weddings, it's all sorts of stuff. So don't hold yourself back, put yourself out there, have some fun. It's, it's all about having fun, about enjoying yourself, otherwise what's the point? Peace out.